If you read the title, yes, you heard it right. This distribution won my heart with its beautiful appearance, hacking focus and arch based. First, let's look at its website and see what it tells us here. It has Microsoft PowerShell installed. It uses the Z shell. We can adjust the fan speed of the laptops. It has hacking tools and it comes with many more features. It uses a window manager, not a desktop environment. And it comes with BSPWM as a window manager. And it says it comes with over 20 themes without wasting time. Let's download the ISO directly and install it. Let's see what it's like. However, when we enter the download page, we see five options. First is home version. This option is only suitable for daily use. The second option is only suitable for Acer Predator users. Other computers or laptops should not download it. The third option, the version that I will download and try, is the hacker optimized version. There are over 400 hacker tools here. The fourth option is the dark version, which means you will be anonymous. This is a version optimized for those browsing the deep web. The fifth option is for ARM processors, but it is still in the development phase. Now I will download the wireless version and try it. ISO size 8 GB. We can open the distro live from the boot menu that appears. Then I will install the distribution directly without further ado. Because sometimes there is a big difference between the system opened as live and the installed system. When you enter the installation, it will ask for a password. The password is the same as the distribution name. The installation is very easy. We say next, next and install it. The installation takes about 20-25 minutes. And we come across such a nice grub menu. I have never seen such a grub menu in any distro before. It's nice. After the system opens, we see a login screen like this. If you have downloaded more than one desktop manager, you can choose the one you want from the settings section. Let's write our password and open the system. When the system is opened, an assistant appears. And here we are given some information about the operating system. The most important part is the keyboard shortcuts. Also, these shortcuts are available on their own sites. You click on the button that looks like a Blender icon in the upper left corner. And you will open the theme application which is perhaps one of the most important parts of the distro. There are 20 themes here. You can choose the one you want and use it. Let's take a quick look. Also, after choosing the theme, you can open the application called Nitrogen and change the desktop wallpaper from there. Now let's look at the applications one by one what was loaded. The first thing that caught my attention was PowerShell. And after opening it and looking at it, it almost has the same functions as the Linux terminal. When I typed NeoFetch, a very nice view welcomed me. I think it uses Dolphin as a file manager. It is a very useful file manager. They made a very nice appearance by using an icon theme. Also, when we open the music folder, we are greeted by some loaded music. It's nice but strange. Why did they do it? I don't know. Now let's come to another topic. What kind of text editor is this? This IDE. If you want to open a new text file, after pressing space once and F twice, we see the templates of all the programming languages that exist on Earth. And by pressing Enter, we create a new file and write our text or program on that template. And has its own music player. When we look at the other applications from the application section, we are greeted by a lot of applications here. I don't know what maybe 80 phases of the applications here are. If you know, please let us know in the comments so we can learn from you. One thing that caught my eye is that there are two browsers installed on this system. One is Brave and the other is Chromium. I understand Brave, but why Chromium? Here we see Wireshark from Hacking Tools. This is mostly used for network monitoring. For photos, Gwemvieven for videos, GNOME video player, can pre-installed. In the settings section, we encounter a large number of system applications. Since the video would be up to 1.2 hours long, if I tried them all, I will skip the applications that I do not know very well, or that are not important to me.
After the application menu is finished, let's take a look at the panel. There is an arch icon on the far left, but this icon changes with each theme. If we click on the CPU, we see the task manager. While we are on the subject, let's see how much resources the system uses when idle. It uses 10% CPUs and 800 MB RAM and takes up 27 GB of disk space. This is very good considering that it has hacking tools. If we click on the GitHub icon, it opens GitHub for us in the browser. When we click on Wi-Fi, it opens the Network Manager. I don't understand what the buttons in the middle are, and there is a music player on the panel, and the other things are standard stuff. And let's open the terminal, and see if the two most popular hacking tools are available. First I'll try SQL Map, then I'll check if the legendary meat exploit is installed. For this, it will be enough to write MSF console to the terminal. And if you click on the belt icon, and press exit, you will be presented with options like shut down, restart, suspend, etc. And that's it. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos like this and want to show that you like this concept, you can show me that you like it by liking my video and subscribing to the channel. See you in future videos.